Hey everybody, it's Isaac from Brothers on Tennis and look who we have here. We have Miss Lindsay Davenport. Lindsay, I have been a fan of yours for so very long. Are you being honest? I am being Are honest. Are you really am, being honest? I am being honest <laughs> because first of all, you were the one person in my opinion that were you were able to stand out in the midst of the whole Serena Venus uprising if you will we love the Williams sisters but you actually got in there and you were like make room ah, make some room you know, I got I, I got some space here I need space it's so crazy um if you look back at the era when Venus and Serena first started playing mid 90s yeah. really they were really young yeah. they really started to hit their stride 98 99 and, and then it took off from there but if you ever go back and look at like the top 10 rankings, like from some of those years, it was oh, yeah. like, it was a crazy era. Like there were so many great players. And yes. obviously Venus and, and Serena changed that entire generation right. because of what they brought to the court and, right. and how, what amazing athletes and how hard they hit and how well they serve. Um, but it was a crazy time. We had so many personalities and so many players. Um, and then up came these two just remarkable champions who at the time kind of took the tennis world by storm. Right. Um, and who would have thought they'd still be playing at their late 30s? You're that not amazing. Crazy. It's that would crazy. be the one thing I would not have predicted yeah. back in the day. I think you and I, I mean, we, I, and even Richard, he said, oh, they'll be gone by the mid 20s and yeah. we won't see anymore. They'll be on fashion and movies. But for you, Lindsay, you won everything. I mean, so, you were number one in the world. You got all the Grand Slam titles, minus the French, but that's okay. Yeah, you made yeah. The I was gonna say no you French. Made it. You no got French. The semifinals, though. <laughs> and on the double side, you were crushing it on the oh. double side as well. Just, I, I, I am just like I said, a big fan of yours. I love the fact that you're so humble and just the humility that you show is just. It's, it's crazy because you are a, a champion in, oh, in, in, in all rights. That's very sweet of you. So I grew up in a house. I was the youngest of two sisters. And I had one sister that was like, don't you ever talk about your tennis. I don't want to sit at dinner and have to hear about your tennis. I was like, you know, like 10, 11, 12. I was always like, oh my gosh. So I never would talk about it at home, oh, even from a young age. Okay. So it never was really comfortable, like talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously something to look back on now. It feels like a different life. It feels yeah. like a, just a completely different it doesn't even feel real, to be honest. We were watching um, the Tokyo Olympics last summer. Uh -huh. And, you know, because of the time delay, I kind of knew what was happening in opening ceremonies. And I said to my 12-year-old daughter, like, we have to watch um, Osaka is going to light the torch. Like, That's this is going right. to be That's amazing. Absolutely. Like, can you believe this? And so we stayed up to watch. And she was saying, you know, we're talking about the Olympics and she's like, well, you didn't play in like that Olympics. I was like, yeah, that's, that's the Olympics that's, I played in. She's like, no mom, like, the, like, I know like there's different like levels, but not like Olympics, like the Tokyo one. I just laughed to myself. Like, yeah, like, if you want to be really humble, I have some kids that are like, oh my gosh, just, like, who are you? What are you talking about? That is yeah. hilarious, Lindsay. Yeah, that's my life. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, yeah, you have to make sure that your daughter understands that, you know, mom did did some things when she was out there. Some I, big things. I've got to let it go now. They'll maybe <laughs> figure it out later. I don't know. <laughs> I would like to ask you about that though. You talked about how back in the day there was kind of the dom dominating. I mean, you know, you had the Hingis and well, I, we yeah. won't go all the way back, but you know, you had yourself, you had the Williams sisters, yep. Capriati was in there. It seems like now any of 15 yeah. women can, that, can can grab a grand slam what's kind of your thinking on that is it a good thing a bad thing or kind of where do you sit on that? you know it's so interesting because when i played when i first came it was um it was the time of steffi and monica and then you That's know right. can't forget monica exactly right. so it, it and then it was like oh it's so boring you know who's going to get to the finals yeah. and then it was then all these different men had a chance and that was exciting but then once it became about the women this last 10 years we weren't sure it was like oh we need a dominant force i don't know yeah. i feel like the depth is much stronger now we had really really good players in the top 20. it okay. was crazy yeah. but i feel like that level between like 20 and 100 they've really gotten a lot better the sport has gotten more athletic it's gotten more involved if you want to say that yeah. um so i think overall the level's higher I think that the players at the very top are dealing with a lot more than we had to deal with. You know, okay. we used to stress okay. about newspaper articles. Like, what is the guy going to say about my forehand? <laughs> and now these players, right. you know, there's social media. Uh, yeah. I think that is a real issue for a lot of them. There's a lot more commitment going around with, I think, other companies and the time right. given. So I think sometimes that some of them might uh, maybe just struggle in managing the time and the tennis. 
Um, I still love watching him play. Every time someone wins their first major, I'm like crying like a baby in the oh, booth. Yeah. Mary oh, Carrillo, yeah. who I work with so much, she's always like, just here's the tissue. <laughs> it's, I love it. I, yeah. I love, I like having the, you don't know what's gonna happen. Right. Um, but certainly I would love to see our very best players playing each other more in some big matches. Absolutely. That's that's the best thing for women's tennis. I agree with you. Well, hopefully Ash is starting to, you know, kind of build that little dominance. So hopefully that can happen with her. I also want to ask you one last thing just in regards to your transition. Yeah. Because you successfully transitioned from player to basically the booth announcer. Who knows what I do. You had, no, well, I will tell you this, myself and my co-host Bryce, we consider you and Chanda to be the top of the top. Whenever someone comes on Tennis Channel, we're like, okay, how are they measuring up with Lindsay and Chanda? I, we, we just love the both of you. How has that transition gone for you? You know, it was a supernatural one. Um, it's so funny you mentioned Chanda. I mean, we grew up together in junior tennis. We spent two years tra traveling together between the ages of 15 and 17 when we first came on tour. Yeah. And now we go back to these tournaments and like at Wimbledon, we stay together. And nice. like, um, it's been fun to kind of make that transition with a friend. Um, you know, I quit playing singles in 2008. That fall, Tennis Channel called me and said, do you want to come into our studio? It's about an hour from your home. We'll call some tennis. Um, and they really helped kind of me get into this world. And they've become like a family to me. So I've always feel I do better when I really like the people that I'm around and they've been wonderful. Um, and in the beginning, it actually was quite easy. I knew all the players. I played against them. I yeah. felt like what their balls felt like when they were playing, <laughs> that what the shots felt were like when they were coming at you. Now it's a little more tricky. I got to do a lot more research and watch a lot on YouTube and, and try and get a feel because I'm not actually out there facing the kind of shots that are coming at me. Right. Um, but I love tennis. I couldn't imagine my life without it. I couldn't imagine not um, being involved in, in some capacity. So I feel really lucky that my transition, I was happy to get out of the so-called limelight when it was on me. I don't mind talking about talking tennis, about but um, yeah, I've been really blessed. The sport has given me really my everything. And so um, I couldn't imagine my life without it. Well, you have given us so much and we thank you so very much. Uh, Lindsay Davenport, thank everyone, you guys. thank you so much. Yeah.